At this point, because of the advances in technology, pretty much every month we get some kind of an unusual discovery somewhere out there, and usually a discovery that doesn't really make sense right away. And this is exactly what happened once again just now. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this unusual detection of what's known as a nova that has officially set a new record for being the fastest nova ever. It seems to have appeared and then disappeared within just a day or so, or I guess essentially just a few hours. And this is something that the scientists have never seen before. Normally nova lasts for at least a few days, or usually for at least a few weeks, and in some cases for a few months while on top of this also possessing unusual pulsating features that have never really been seen before and that are somewhat difficult to explain right now. And so I wanted to discuss this particular discovery in a little bit more detail, but also focus on the idea of nova as opposed to supernova, mostly because there is still a bit of a confusion about what they are, and because these events are actually very very common, but are normally not talked about simply because they're not as dramatic. And I guess let's start right here, so what is the difference between a supernova and just nova? Well, as you might already know, a supernova involves an exploding star, a star that essentially disappears leaving behind some sort of a remnant, possibly some kind of a black hole, possibly some kind of a neutron star, maybe nothing. But by definition, every single nova we've discovered to date has always involved some kind of a white dwarf. In this case, we don't think nova can actually be produced without a white dwarf. And white dwarf, as you probably know, is a type of a remnant that our sun is going to become one day as well, that essentially is made out of what's known as the degenerate matter. It's also been sometimes compared to a kind of an ocean of electrons in a kind of a free-floating form that seem to create this somewhat exotic structure. And so once in a while these objects start to acquire what's known as the accretion disk. And although most of these accretion disks will be very small and generally only have a few asteroids or possibly remnants of different planets orbiting around them, in some cases, especially when there is a very giant planet near the white dwarf, or more often some kind of a star close to it, they'll actually create a very interesting binary system. Although here the second object has to be much less dense, so normally this requires some kind of a giant star such as a red giant. And so in this binary system, the red giant will then start losing its mass, and all of the mass in this case will start slowly accreting around the white dwarf. The secretion process by itself is already quite interesting and quite intriguing because there are so many different features that start to form in these binary systems. For example, there's a very interesting peak right here that seems to produce a lot of X-ray radiation, with the accretion itself happening along the polar regions of the white dwarf. In other words, all of this is more or less magnetically driven. And though a lot of this matter will eventually end up in the white dwarf, possibly increasing its mass to the point where it does go supernova, in this case this would be a type 1a supernova, in most cases this doesn't happen, or at least doesn't happen right away. What happens in most cases is an intriguing formation of a somewhat strange instability inside the disk itself. Or essentially the accretion disk starts to accumulate so much mass where it reaches the point where a lot of this mass kind of starts acting like a miniature sun. It goes thermonuclear and it kind of explodes. With the explosion releasing so much mass and so much light at once that it can actually be seen from pretty far away. In essence resembling something that you're about to see in this video right here. And so when this happens, this does produce what we refer to as nova and can last for anywhere from a few days to possibly a few months. This process has been detected so many times and it actually happens very very often, several times per year and in many different locations in the galaxy. And this is a recurring process with certain nova known to happen with a relatively regular schedule and some of them have been officially predicted before they happened. We actually discussed one of these nova relatively recently, and you can find out more about this in the video right there or in the description. But the nova that the scientists refer to as V1647 Hercules pretty much right away created a bit of a mystery. It appeared on June 12, 2021, and then it disappeared pretty much a day later. This has never happened before. This is the first time we've seen such a quick appearance and disappearance of an actual nova event. The previous record holder was this nova, and this one lasted for approximately three days, with the light still generally being visible even after a week. But for this new nova, the light seems to have disappeared extremely quickly, and then the scientists discovered something else very strange about this. The light and the energy coming from this nova was also pulsing every 501 seconds. Although in this case the pulsation is maybe a little bit easier to explain. In this case, the scientists believe that it's probably because of the rotation of the white dwarf or possibly the rotating magnetic field that seems to spin every 501 seconds. 
So basically here, either the white dwarf itself or the accretion disk is kind of wobbling around with that particular period. And because this wobble has actually been visible for a very long time, and it's also visible in various frequencies, here the scientists think that all this is coming from the disk itself and very likely is caused by the white dwarf oscillating in a certain way. They also noticed an unusual formation of a kind of a wind or ejecta in this case that seems to be dependent on the position of the white dwarf and the companion star that seems to basically shape the flow of the material coming from the system. Which is reminiscent of a lot of other binary systems with a lot of interaction in them where the system itself is responsible for producing unusual shapes that eventually form these very beautiful formations over time. This one here is known as V838 Monocerotis and you can learn more about this in one of the previous videos somewhere right there or in the description. But all of this material that's being injected one day is going to create new stars and new planets. And so one of the things that the scientists are hoping to learn here is what sort of materials are produced in these very powerful explosions. For example, how much lithium is produced during a typical nova. Today the scientists believe that most of the lithium in the universe was very likely produced in this way. And so exactly how much of it is coming from various nova will actually be more clear once the scientists study some of these events. And because this fast explosion also suggests that not all of the mass was very likely dislodged from the accretion disk and a lot of the mass was probably swallowed by the white dwarf, it also means that in this case, this white dwarf might actually come closer and closer to its instability mass, the mass known as the Chandrasekhar limit, approximately 1.4 masses of the Sun, at which point it might go type 1a supernova. Something that happens with a lot of white dwarfs in binary systems once they reach their limit and essentially explodes them to the point where practically nothing is left behind. And these are some of the most important supernova out there and the supernova we usually use to measure distances in space. They're known as space candles. So in other words, this white dwarf is kind of important when it comes to studying a lot of these principles simply because of its oddness and because of the unusual features it seems to have created. Although at the moment nobody expects it to go supernova anytime soon. But it might go nova again, especially because there's probably still a lot of material in the vicinity. Either way though, we don't really know what's going to happen just yet because this is a very recent discovery. But on that note, well that's pretty much it. Once the scientists discover something else or find another unusual nova, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.